Alright, so before I get into the meat and potatoes of this video, I'm going to quickly go over four different pieces of gear which are not firearms related, which can be used for the purpose of bear defense. The first, of course, is bear spray. Bear spray is the most effective, non-lethal form of bear defense. Bear spray emits a chemical called capsaicin from a pressurized container, which is highly irritable to the scent receptors in most predators and human beings. Next are bear bangers. A bear banger is a non-lethal blank centerfire cartridge which is fired from a pen launcher like this. It emits a loud sound which typically will scare off a bear or at least startle it and slow down its advance. Next are bear bells. Bear bells are good to just wear in your belt while you're walking through a trail. Bear bells are said to be useful in notifying wildlife of your presence long before you may encounter them. Typically these can be heard within 30 to 40 yards in a densely forested area. Last but not least is an uncommon method of bear deterrence and it's actually a flare. Now there's only one specialized flare that I know of that's designed for the actual purpose of bear deterrence and that is the bear flare. I've done an extensive review of this product on my channel before. I'll post a link in the description. The bear flare is a multi-pronged sensory deterrent which utilizes very bright light, very loud sound, and a lot of smoke and exceptionally high heat to ward off a predator. I will post links to all these items in the description, but for now, let's get to the real point of this video, shall we? Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. Testing out my new Zyun Crane 3-axis DSLR gimbal stabilizer. Probably only a few of you comprehend what I mean when I say that, but it's a pretty cool device. Anyways, I wanted to do a standalone video for a topic that I embedded in another video recently, and it was about what to do to avoid a bear attack. Or an attack from wildlife in general. Now I gotta say first off as a disclaimer, use this advice with caution and I can't be held accountable for how you use it. Mostly what I'm gonna say is gonna be preventative. If you try to use it in a one-to-one -one confrontation with uh, wildlife, then you are at risk of being injured, of course. Nothing is 100% foolproof. You'll notice in nature, there are many instances where smaller animals will fight off larger ones. And they do this because they're ferocious, they're tenacious, they're unrelenting, and they're fearless. Even a predator on an unconscious level perhaps, understands that even a small cut in the wilderness can become infected and can lead to their demise. And animals don't have doctors, they don't have bandages, so they don't want to get injured. So more often than not, they'll avoid a hard target. They'll go for the path of least resistance. Bad news bears are like gangbangers. They know a mark when they see one. So what you need to do out there in the bush is you need to look vital. You need to look like you have blood flowing through your veins. If you look weak, if you look sickly, if you're sauntering around your campsite, sauntering around from task to task and there's some predator or predators, in the case of wolves, scoping you out, they are going to take that opportunity. Remember, it's always the weak ones. If you watch those wildlife documentaries with the wildebeest, you know, which one does a lion go for? It goes for the weak one. Now, like I said, this isn't gonna work 100% of the time. If you come across a mother bear with her cubs, chances are she's going to fight you regardless. Or she might just do a bluff charge. Usually that's all that's going to happen. 
is they're going to bluff charge you and they're going to run off. Because like I say, they don't want a confrontation either, especially the ones who've never seen humans before. They see you with all your bright colored clothing, you know, your tools, your walking stick, whatever. They don't know what to expect. So you have the element of surprise. They know what a deer looks like. And to you, perhaps you're some variation of a deer or you're some variation of another creature that they've seen in the wilderness. So they don't entirely understand you unless they're one of those domesticated bears that feed off of uh, human refuse. So what you want to do is be a hard target. It's pretty simple. You want to move with intention. When you're walking through the bush, you want to make a lot of noise. An ounce of prevention is worth one whopping pound of wildlife encounter. So you're much better off doing what you can to avoid a wildlife encounter. And that means making noise. A lot of people are embarrassed to make noise in the wilderness. Man, I could care less. When I'm walking through the mountains, I'm not right now, but when I am and I'm in grizzly bear country, I could care less what people think of me singing songs or howling down the trail. That's what you're supposed to do. But you need to understand that animals aren't stupid. They're gonna size you up. There's good bears and there's bad bears. It's like uh, Lonnie at Far North Bushcraft and Survival said once, he's the guy who basically lives in the backwoods of Alaska. He does all sorts of great bushcraft stuff. I'll post a link to his channel in the description. He knows a lot more about this stuff than I do probably. And he's probably had a lot more bear encounters than me. But uh, indeed, I've had my fair share. And his whole idea is that bears are just like people. You have good ones, you have bad ones. You have curious ones, and you have ones that are ish disturbers, if you know what I'm saying, who like to bully people. There's bully bears. So, you need to know what you're up against. But just remember, don't be the path of least resistance. I mean, think about it. If you see somebody who's walking with stride in their step, with motivation, with intensity, with intent, then you're probably not gonna, you're probably gonna step out of the way of that person. Whereas a person who just kind of slowly drifting being pushed by the bush and not pushing bush, they're probably going to be an easy target. So all I'm saying is if you want to drastically minimize the chance of a negative wildlife encounter, make yourself look busy. The same principle applies to human beings. I mean, if you look like you're strong and you have a lot of life in you and you're aware of your surroundings, that's another thing. Animals know if you're aware of your surroundings. It's just like uh, the ravens, the scavenger type creatures. They know when you're looking at them, they know when you can see out the corner of your eye and they take any opportunity they can to capitalize when they think you're not looking or when they know you're not looking. So it's important to have that awareness as well. That's why when you're walking through cougar country, it's important to do a 180 or a 360, I should say, every once in a while, just to, you know, let them know that you're aware. So anyways, let me know what you think about this strategy in the comments. If you have any tips on how to deal with wildlife, leave them below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out.